right. Hello, everybody. Good afternoon. Uh, and welcome to this uh, special event. Thank you very much for joining us. My name is Kyle Burgess, as Tracy said. I am the, uh, the board chair with the New Market Chamber and also a senior employment lawyer with Minkin Employment Lawyers. Uh, we would like to begin this afternoon with a land acknowledgement. As a guest and settler on Turtle Island, I want to begin our meeting in a good way by acknowledging the land that we live and work on. This is an important step on our path of truth and towards reconciliation, which is the work of all Canadians. I want to acknowledge that we are on the traditional territories of the Wendat and the Haudenosaunee and the Anishinaabe peoples, whose presence here continues to this day. We also would like to acknowledge this is the unceded treaty lands of the First Nations of the Williams Treaty and thank the signatory nations uh, respectfully, or respectively for sharing these lands with us. We would also like to acknowledge the Chippewas of Georgina Island First Nation as our closest First Nation community and we extend the hand of partnership to them so we can live in a good way and in accordance with our treaty agreements. Uh, we are all treaty people and we all have responsibilities to the treaty agreements. I invite you to find out more about the treaty that you live on and consider not only the way that the land shows up for you, but how you can show up for the land to live in a relationship. Um, I will let Mayor Taylor acknowledge the town councillors and, and staff, uh, but I would like to acknowledge first uh, that MP Tony Van Bynen is here in attendance with us uh, today. Uh, thank you very much for joining us. Uh, and also, I'd like to welcome the, the following uh, the board members who are in attendance as well. Uh, we have Rudy Aquino from BMO Business Banking, our vice chair, James Daigle from TreeFrog, uh, Ryan Dibish from New Make It, Shauna Farty from uh, Sun Life Financial, uh, Javid Khan from Impression, Neil Stratton from the Black Stratton Group at Scotia McLeod, and our past chair, Jim Van Dusen with New Roads Automotive Group. Um, with meetings uh, that have many participants like, like this one, speaker view can make it easier uh, to see who is speaking. And also, I believe that there are some slides as well that, uh, that are going to be put up onto the screen, uh, particularly during the, the presentation and, and then also the question and answer session. So if you want to, you can change your view uh, in the top right hand corner of, of the Zoom setting uh, to the speaker view if that makes it easier for you. Uh, thank you to Mayor Taylor for agreeing to share with us this afternoon. We will be hearing from, uh, from you very shortly, uh, shortly Mayor Taylor. Uh, just a quick reminder that we have launched a virtual experience designed to bring organizations and customers and consumers together. As I am sure we all know, shopping from home is at an all-time high. Uh, the newmarkethomeshow.ca website is a dynamic virtual showcase that brings uh, the home show to you, so please make sure you check it out. Before I pass the virtual microphone over to Mayor Taylor, I'd like to recognize the strong partnership we have with the town that has been even more collaborative during the pandemic. Uh, we partnered on the business assistance concierge program, the Choose Local campaign, and have worked closely with them to ensure that businesses had access to the information, uh, the promotional opportunities and support that they needed. Uh, the unique collaborative environment that is a cornerstone of the new market community makes our, our community stronger and, and we appreciate the ongoing partnership we share with the, the town staff, mayor and council. Um, now, without further ado, uh, I would like to welcome and turn things over to Mayor Taylor. Well, thank you very much, much appreciated. I'm just gonna share a screen now, I think. Hopefully I do it successfully. Uh, is everybody, is, that, is the screen showing? The slides? Yeah, good. Okay. Um, oh, the slides are not toggling again. We're having some troubles here. I apologize, everybody. It's not working. Oh, hang on, that worked. Okay, they're working. We're good. Okay. <laughs> uh, technology. Okay, so anyway, uh, very, very, uh, uh, you know, glad to be here. I um, want to thank the Chamber for uh, creating this opportunity again to talk to our local business community and, and many of our business leaders and, uh, and people involved uh, heavily in the community. Uh, it's, uh, it's an important uh, part uh, of, of what we're experiencing through COVID, but in general is communication, is having open lines and channels of communication and they really value this opportunity. So I uh, want to start by, you know, I think what you're going to see me do is I'm going to have a look at COVID, where we're at, you know, how it's affecting the economy, and then trying to look forward a little bit. So I thought I would start with uh, though with a couple of uh, slides of recognition. And the first one is I, I really wanna start by saying uh, how incredibly fortunate I, I am to work with uh, an incredible council. Uh, this is a group of councillors who are uh, knowledgeable 
uh, and dedicated uh, and passionate not only about this town but about their ward and about uh, progress and moving forward and the work that they've done through uh, through COVID, the tough decisions they've made, the support they provided to their residents has been uh, very significant and frankly uh, they've been a great help to me uh, working through many very difficult decisions and I want to thank uh, them all and I know I believe all of them are on the um, on this Zoom today. Uh, I also really want to take a moment to recognize the town staff. Uh, this has been, uh, and, and many of you know with businesses, uh, how difficult COVID has been on, on your staff. Uh, and the what our staff have gone through having to pivot and turn and pivot and turn time and again, taking on new entirely new roles to go and help areas that are overwhelmed, uh, going and be, becoming volunteers or helping to run vaccination centers, working under very difficult circumstances as, as frontline workers during COVID and with the risks of COVID. Uh, and I just want to say to the staff that are listening and beyond uh, that uh, your, your council and this town, uh, you know, thanks you and recognizes the incredible contributions you're making uh, even today uh, in, in difficult circumstances and really just uh, managing to keep the town moving forward and creating uh, incredible responses, which I'll review some of them. And every one of these things I review today, it's uh, our staff that have been behind us making it happen. So let's start just quickly looking at COVID. Uh, and I, I, I mean, we, we know this, but it's, it's interesting to look at. This is the chart of Newmarket. Uh, and you, know, you can see that way back uh, uh, over a year ago in March, there was uh, you know, very, barely any cases. And I, I don't know if a few of you might recall, but I, I was in the news a little bit then because I went and got tested when it was just all happening. I got very sick and, uh, and uh, went and got tested and thank goodness it was a negative test. And, and then from there, the journey sort of began. And, you know, there's that first peak, the first wave that we were overwhelmed by, right? And it, and it was significant and it was, uh, there was more that, less that was known then. And so it was a very challenging. But then we got into a second wave and now into a third wave that is, as you can see, the, the sheer numbers of it. And this chart, while only dealing with the new market numbers on a, on a daily average, is, uh, is very similar to the provincial and the regional charts. Um, and it really gives you an idea of what we're dealing with. Now you can see it's coming down since the stay at home order. Uh, we're, we're seeing some good numbers reductions there and that's that there's reason to be positive. Um, so, so if you just take today as a snapshot, uh, there's 166 cases in Newmarket and about 2,500 in York Region. Uh, and that's um, the, today the daily cases were down nicely. Yesterday Newmarket had 29, today there's 15. Uh, you know, they, they might be up in the 20s again tomorrow, but the, the trend in general in the last week or two is starting to show reason for promise. York Region only at 268 and we say only now in the context of the last few weeks. Um, but certainly that's still a significant number. Uh, the other interesting part to look to there is the active variant cases. As you can see, the active variant cases are more than half of all cases now. Uh, so uh, that's very significant. The number I really wanna point everybody to, and, and if you wanna follow one statistic, it's the R value. You see at the bottom, the R, York region R value is 0.85. If you have an R value of one and you have 2,500 cases, then one R value means it's reproductive value, R value. It means one case will create one more case. So as one disappears, one comes online. It means if you have 2,500, you'll continue to have 2,500. If you have 1.2 R value, your cases are going up and quickly. If you have a 0.85, they're coming down. If we can get down to 0.65 or 0.5 or lower, those numbers will come down. So that R value will, will literally tell you which direction the trend is going. So, we know that we're in the third wave. We're starting to see some numbers coming down. Uh, it's been very impactful. It's been very impactful on the economy, on small businesses, on people's lives. Uh, I know people, frankly, uh, I know people who've died of COVID, uh, several, uh, and certainly we all know somebody who's, who's gotten COVID and some very sick. So trying to, to, to find a way through that uh, addresses the, the business impacts, the mental health impacts, uh, the, uh, the COVID health impacts uh, is, is very tricky but you've got to work together to do it. So York Region and South Lake and the town uh, have been endeavoring to have a coordinated response throughout the pandemic. Uh, early on, uh, you know, South Lake was working with the town, came to us and we set up a, a, a testing center at this, uh, the meeting place. Up to then, uh, for instance, when I was tested way back in March, it was at, I went through the emergency room at South Lake. So now they've got a great testing center at, at the seniors meeting place. Uh, the chamber uh, employees know well that, that it's uh, right, uh, right across from them. And it's very efficient and it's functioning well and, and they're keeping on top of the track and tracing. So that was a, a first partnership. Uh, I remember uh, some time ago, a few months ago, Arden Crystal called me and on a Sunday and said, we'd like to set up a vaccination center in 72 hours at Ray Twain Center. Uh, and that was from the, the question to doing it. 
Um, as some of you know, there was a there was a, a bumpy day and a couple of a, a bit of a bit of learning curve at the beginning, but it it, uh, it quickly has now become something that is just running very very well. Uh, town staff there, um, some volunteer and some employed out front, uh, managing the sort of front of house if you want to call it that, and South Lake uh, working through the vaccinations and the processing, and it's going extremely smoothly. Uh, to, to put it in perspective. Uh, since they've opened there, 71,697 people have been vaccinated at that, at that one vaccination center. Uh, so very impressive. And there's been so many other partnerships. And of course, there's a, a great feel good picture of Tim Horton supporting uh, the South Lake employees as well. Uh, so vaccinations up to this point, where are we now? Uh, so you can see this, it's, it's actually going very, very well uh, in, in many ways. We, we'd all like to see vaccinations moving more quickly. Uh, we would all like to see us further ahead than this, but um, as we know from the news yesterday, uh, we've, it looks like May is going to be a very busy month for vaccines uh, and want to thank the uh, federal government. I know Tony Van Bynum is on the call and the provincial government uh, for getting making uh, what looks like May to be a, a very important month. Uh, they're, they're, you know, Ontario is looking at, York Region is looking at uh, being able to book appointments for everybody uh, uh, over the age of 18 in the month uh, of May. And uh, you know, I know people say, well, that's just an appointment. I can tell you uh, that, uh, well, well, unexpected things happen during COVID. I think they would not be doing that if they weren't very confident that the vaccine supply was coming uh, through. And so even with that good news coming, look at the numbers of, especially the elderly, where, where a, a great deal of fatalities were, how high the levels of vaccination are now. It's very promising. York Region also had to have a coordinated response and had to have a response, a massive response. So look at this first line, that is mind boggling. I'm on the board of health as, as, as uh, Deputy Mayor uh, Vague and at York Region. And uh, normally uh, York Region Public Health has about 75 employees. They've, they've ramped that up to 1000 employees. So uh, it, you know if uh, sometimes you call and it seems confusing or you thought somebody was eligible, but they weren't, imagine ramping your business up in a few months from 75 to 1000 and how there might be some things that might not go perfectly. Um, but overall, things are going very well. A heavy emphasis on tracking and tracing. That's what a lot of those people are doing. It's finding those cases, finding their contacts, and, and, and getting them into quarantine. And a lot of work around uh, isolation centers and working with the homeless population, as well as some uh, economic supports. Uh, of course, as was stated at the opening by Kyle, uh, Newmarket and the Chamber of Commerce have a long history and tradition, uh, one that's, I think, envied in some locations in the province for working closely together for great partnerships. And I can tell you, and I think, uh, you know, Kyle and Tracy and others would say, uh, it's now closer than it's ever been. Uh, we've partnered in so many ways through this. We're in constant communication. And some of those examples are, you know, working either together or supporting one another on independent programs, but uh, things like the business assistant concierge program, the mentorship access program, uh, and the choose local program in one form or another, whether it's the chambers or the towns or the BIAs and even the regions. Uh, the emphasis on shopping local, uh, everyone, we have to keep that up. We can't sort of let that wane or go, oh, well, we've done that. Uh, it's something that's got to be a, a, an ongoing presence and an ongoing effort and ongoing uh, communication around that. Um, and as you can see, we even uh, converted uh, all of Main Street uh, very quickly to 30 minute only parking for curbside pickup is another example of uh, business support. We've also had a lot of financial relief uh, and business financial relief. For a year, we waived penalty interest on, on property taxes, a very expensive program, I can tell you. Uh, we then decided to target it because many people and some people on this call, I'm sure, uh, didn't need the financial relief. And we wanted to make sure it was getting to those who needed it most. So we targeted the elderly. And we also targeted uh, sign fees for businesses and that $1,000 water wastewater rebate for eligible small businesses uh, was, was a, a very important step forward as well. Uh, we established a COVID-19 response reserve fund, which helps us manage the financial uh, ups and downs of this. Uh, we, we need to be able to support uh, the community and be able to put the programs in place. We need to have that reserve fund to help us uh, manage it. And we've put that in place uh, uh, some time ago. And it's, uh, it's, it's only effective with the help uh, that we've received from the federal and provincial governments as well in supporting municipalities. Uh, of course, uh, a cornerstone of the, the business support program has been the 2021, uh, 2020, 2021 patio program. We're ready to go again. As soon as things can reopen, uh, the, you know, many of them are in place already. These pop-up patios went everywhere. I've heard from many businesses who said it made a big difference in, in getting through some tough times and hopefully it will assist them again as they reopen and, and will be in need of revenue. I can assure you I'll be sitting on one of those 
uh, the minute we're able, because I want to support those businesses. I want to provide them with revenue. Uh, and the town put those not only put that program in place, but uh, covered a lot of the costs of the patios and, 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 and for those businesses. Uh, and then the other part I want to emphasize in supporting the community is this sort of uh, collective mental health or the, 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 the well-being and the, the, the morale of the community. It's, it, it was early on, it became clear. And you can see it again now. It's, it's, it's very difficult for people to keep their chins up sometime. And so we have to constantly be doing things in this area to try to support our community. Uh, and so in the center there on the top, you can see Jamie Boyle. Uh, I, I named him the Chief Positivity Officer for the town of Newmarket, I believe the first uh, in Canada. Uh, and he's it was an existing employee and he's just a magical guy who, who thinks every day in every way about how to lift people's spirits, how to encourage people and create optimism. Uh, and then we of course uh, nominated 50 community positivity ambassadors. And uh, this is a group of people who are out there still spreading positivity and optimism uh, reaching out to neighbors, talking to friends and active on, on social media and really want to thank them for their ongoing efforts. We, we recognized as an honorary citizen, this is a very rare occasion that we do this, but we recognized our first responders, frontline workers and essential workers uh, uh, in a ceremony, including long-term care workers. And of course, there's community groups all over that we try to support that are just forming all the time to, to help the community on their own. Uh, people all over town. It, it's, it's been inspirational to see, and this is a, a group that was creating PPE in the Hollingsworth Arena for some time, uh, but there's so many other examples and, uh, that I don't even know of them all, and the ward councillors have supported many of them as well in their efforts to uh, support the community, uh, and that's just been so important, and we need to keep that up. This difficult, the tough time is not over. We've got some, some, a little bit of time to go yet, uh, and so keep reaching out people to your friends and families and neighbours. Encourage them. Uh, share some optimism. Uh, and know that uh, we're getting through this together. So uh, what's the economy looking like? Uh, we know COVID has been tough. We know it's been tough on businesses. Uh, and what's it doing to the economy in general? Just a, a bit of a quick overview here, but uh, unemployment rates um, have uh, dramatically increased, uh, you know, in some of the tougher times as COVID hit and the waves hit. Uh, you know, our normal unemployment rates uh, in, in uh, York region of uh, 5% uh, spiked to as high as almost 14%. And now down or the around the eight nine percent area. So that tells you that there's still very significant challenges out there. We can't uh, ever think that because there's uh, so much government support or because you know the vaccines are rolling out that that the good times are ahead or because people have so much money in their bank accounts we've got nothing to worry about. We've got to keep an eye on uh, the economy, the local economy, and making sure that we continue to support uh, the residents and the business community. Uh, be well beyond uh, when we, we reach uh, significant vaccination levels because the, the recovery will take long for some of these businesses. Uh, you can see here that uh, you know, we're down 55,000 people. I mean, really, essentially our employment level, our total jobs in York region are back to 2016. Three years of hard fought growth has been wiped out. Now we hope to see that come back in the next year or two and get us back up to 2019 and beyond, our 2020, uh, 2019 numbers and beyond, but it's gonna take some work. Uh, and here you can see that the, uh, the jobs numbers, again, it, it just reflects those, a huge downward drop uh, when, when you know, the tough times of COVID recovered quite nicely, but uh, showing some weakness again. And, and we got to keep our eye on these numbers and make sure that we're, we're responding when necessary. So here's the thing, though. Uh, you know, we're living in COVID. Everybody's trying to manage businesses in COVID. Uh, it's not an easy time. Uh, and... I think everybody on this call, including myself, knows how easy it is to become, become completely consumed with COVID, COVID numbers. What are we gonna do about COVID? Uh, you know, how are we gonna respond? Can we open, can we close? Uh, what can we provide? What can we not do? Uh, but I also know that many of you are doing what we're doing here at the town of Newmarket. And that's where we're saying, we're not going to let it take 100% of our time. We've got to keep one eye on the future. We've got to plan for, Two months from now, we've got to plan for two years from now, we've got to plan for two decades from now. If we're going to continue to build an incredible community here in the town of Newmarket, we've got to keep moving forward. And, we, and, and the way to keep moving forward is to remember that, that we have our strategic plans and priorities to guide us. Council strategic priorities that were set for by, by council in this term, you know, long-term financial sustainability, uh, economic leadership job creation, extraordinary places and spaces, vibrancy on Young Davis and Mulock, safe transportation, environmental stewardship. They have KPIs. Um, and by the way, we have this great dashboard now on our website you can go to and play around with and see and dig into each of these areas and see what some of the directions are under them and how we're achieving on those. We're being very 
transparent in order to guide us and, and the community on what we're trying to achieve. And I encourage people to look at that. So that's going to guide us into the future. That's going to remind us, keep moving forward, keep thinking about, you know, we're going to be out of this uh, one day and we're going to be two or four years from now. And we've got to be ready to continue to progress, to continue to be one of the best places to live in Canada. Uh, our economic development strategy, just newly minted 2021, 2024. Uh, it, you know, again, have a look at that. We, we've got strategies to continue to make sure we can attract businesses, we can grow businesses, we can attract new residents, and we can be a place where people want to live and work and do business and be known as a place of excellence. And so our economic development strategy has a great deal of detail. We've got an incredible uh, economic development committee of, of, of business leaders, entrepreneurs uh, uh, that, are, that are worked on this with us and guided us. Uh, and of course, the chambers represented there. Um, so we, we've got to keep moving uh, forward and following that strategy. Uh, and finally, something I want to introduce you to is uh, we have a very um, robust now, probably our first full uh, and, and comprehensive uh, financial, long-term financial strategy in the town of Newmarket. Uh, it's something uh, I was passionate about, council was passionate when we came in. We had the former uh, treasurer and uh, commissioner of finance for York Region partner with our own treasurer and director of finance and the two of them together uh, built an incredibly strong blueprint uh, full of comparisons to other municipalities and key metrics and numbers so that we know uh, our financial picture inside and out because you can only drive a local economy, you, you can only build incredible places and spaces, you can only provide services and outdoor amenities and concerts to people on a strong financial foundation. And so we are very focused in on this and using this as a tool along with our strategic guidelines to keep new market moving into the future. And so uh, one of uh, the other guiding principles here is making sure this is an affordable place to live from a tax perspective. And that guides us as well. And so uh, we, we always say we wanna be uh, you know, a, a below uh, the GTA average, about 10% below the GTA average is typically where we've existed. Uh, you can see the York region average is coming down a little bit, but the GTA average uh, remains uh, uh, about 10% above us. And that guides us and makes sure we're competitive and make sure we're not putting too, mid, too big of a tax burden on individuals and businesses, um, but also allows us to uh, create the revenue we need to do uh, incredible things and to grow our community. So uh, with those in mind, then you can look forward and say, okay, so we've got our strategies. We've got a sound financial uh, picture. Uh, we've got an economic development strategy. Now let's start talking about, and so I, I wanted to look at three areas quickly with everybody here that I think are, are crucial to moving forward and to thinking, where do you wanna be well into the future? Uh, housing affordability, development and growth, recreation and community building. So housing affordability is always a challenge and people hear me talk about this often, but I believe truly that this is meaningful to everybody. If you don't have a community where everybody can live, where every uh, business who needs employees, their employees can live, uh, you don't have housing options for everyone, then you don't, have, you, you don't have the basis on which to build a strong local economy in an incredible community. And so whether that's uh, affordable housing in the form of a Belinda's place or in from the cold for those who, who are the most challenged or affordable home, home ownership in the form of condos or townhomes. Uh, and of course, we still have to produce single family homes. Uh, and, and the big one is rental. You know, there's a, there's a massive 7,000 unit uh, uh, shortage of rental housing in the GTA. Uh, we're all behind the eight ball in rental housing. And we know that if people want to downsize, seniors want to downsize, uh, young people want to establish themselves in a community and build a business, they need rental options. And so that's so important as well. And that's all part of the housing affordability picture. But we also have a how, a for, uh, Housing York, deep affordability or subsidized housing. And we're doing a lot of work in that area. I'm the chair of Housing York. And we're looking at some very innovative ways to advance that. And we've got a stated goal in our strategic plan to double the number of truly uh, deep affordable housing units uh, year over year in Housing York uh, over the next uh, term and, and beyond. Uh, and so why are we talking about housing affordability? Why is it a challenge? Well, there's the average uh, resale price uh, in, uh, in uh, 2020. Um, this, it's gone up 16% there, but it's gone up as we know even more since then. This, uh, the last year over year, it's about 25% in the new market in New York region area. Uh, it, it's exploding. Uh, even before the recent explosion, the 2019 numbers show you that the fa average family income rose about 19% in the last decade. Average house price rose 110%. Those two numbers are shocking. I know you, some of you heard me raise them before, but they're shocking. If you think a young person, young couple starting a family 
can have their family income going up at that rate and afford a house that's jumping by 10 and 20% a year. It's not realistic. In fact, what we're gonna see, uh, whether we like it or not, is we're gonna see the number of renters, which is about 20% right now in New Market and New York region, uh, go up significantly over the next several decades. It's gonna go up to 30, 40, even beyond that percent. And we have to have those rental housing options for people. Uh, the, the, you know, the, the fact is um, many of us wouldn't be able to afford the house we live in today on the salaries we earn today. We're only in them. Uh, and I know this doesn't apply to everyone in the call, but some of the, some of the people in the call, we're only in them because we bought them when house, housing was more affordable, right? So now a, a people with great professions, an electrician and a nurse probably couldn't afford a house in York region. Look at that average new single detached house, 1.4 million almost in York region. Uh, so it's a very serious challenge. And we've got to bring housing supply on to meet that challenge. If we don't keep bringing housing supply on, housing will get more, it's supply and demand. It's, it's, you know, it's not that simple, but it's important. Uh, we know that uh, in, in the GTHA, the growth coming is very significant, right? York region is going to go by about 27%. That's going to go to by 20, 50, 51 to 2.2 million. The GTHA is going to go up uh, to two, two by, the GTHA is going to grow by 2.6 million people in the next 25 to 30 years. Think of the size of that city and the kinds of services and infrastructure you need to support that. So as we, as we grow, we need to provide housing options for everybody and make sure that we don't uh, continually see this rapid escalation of housing prices, uh, which is difficult to do because I, I don't know how many people realize this, but we're the fastest, GTHA is the fastest growing population center in the United States and Canada combined. It surpassed Chicago in pure numbers. In the last few years, it will, it will surpass uh, Los Angeles in about 15 to 20 years. Uh, very, very rapid growth. Now, it's not that rapid in, uh, in Newmarket and York region anymore as it once was. We've grown at about 1%, which is very manageable, very sustainable. In fact, if you get down to zero, you have a stagnant uh, local economy. So you do want to uh, have growth. You do want to see new residents moving to your community and, and driving business growth and, and creating uh, opportunity. Um, to give you an example of what you can expect uh, in uh, new market in the upcoming years, you can see here that uh, uh, under construction currently are uh, in, in the urban center is 435 units outside 353. So uh, the number of units soon to be built already been allocated is about uh, uh, 2000 more people. And then the number of units to be built, uh, but they don't have approvals or allocation yet, but they're certainly in process is a significant 7000 people. So that's sort of more like out of out over 10 years. But we add about a thousand people per year to new market. And we've done that for about uh, a decade. Uh, so uh, we need, we're going to see more intensification. Here's four examples. All of the received allocation, all are well through or completed the planning process. Uh, and we'll see those um, start to come on the Young Davis corridor. And those will provide some housing options and opportunities and some affordable ones. Uh, again, uh, as I said, we need those housing options for everybody. This is a visual image of what they can look like. It can be many different types of things. Um, but as we do that, as we build and we bring uh, new people to our community and new people to our country, uh, we have to make sure there's recreation and, and a community that's ready uh, to, to meet that growth. And so we have to plan in future for infrastructure. This is an area I'm very passionate about. Uh, I think uh, I've said this many times before. I believe the cornerstone of a great community is shared public outdoor spaces. And the cornerstone of our plan moving forward for that, of course, is the new lock farm. You can see that in the image in the center. Uh, on the right there is the new skate park that's gonna be going in at the Magna Center. Uh, and uh, the uh, you know trails and benches and everything that we need to do to build this uh, incredible future. Uh, so those new amenities that'll come in, uh, those is one of those uh, projects on uh, Davis Drive at Deerfield Road it has a beautiful new park, a parkette uh, uh, attached to it. The splash pad, Arkansas splash pad over in Ward 6, Kelly Broom has worked very hard on. That's coming online. And, and in Ward 1 at the Magna Center, we're seeing the, the uh, and those are just examples. There's other amenities coming throughout the town to make sure that we have those shared outdoor public spaces for people. That, that's that skate park in the top left uh, over at the Magna Center, which will be built this summer. Um, so new amenities are coming on, but of course, the Mulock property. Uh, and what I want to quickly say here is uh, this is a very significant investment. Uh, on a significant piece of property. When it's done, it'll be uh, you know around 14 acres plus. Uh, and this is something that is, is basically entirely being paid for through new development. Uh, so 
Every time a new unit is built, we collect money. Our last plan five years ago anticipated the Mealock property and each unit gives a certain amount towards park and recreation. And they will continue to do that over the next decades. So we collect money specifically for parks and recreation, even specifically for the Mealock uh, property. And it, now it's our obligation to deliver on that and to make sure that there's spaces and infrastructure for people uh, as our communities grow, especially those living in, in intensified settings. But of course, this incredible new park with you know skating trail and, and water features and, and, and quiet areas and gardens will be there for all of our existing residents as well and will be enjoyed by so many people. This is a project that will be there uh, 100 years from now and residents will cherish it and use it uh, as a corner piece of our community. Uh, and I believe we're building something of great importance. And I can say the community in involvement in this has been like nothing before. The community has literally designed this together and it's been very exciting. I know council has, has found it to be a very exciting journey. We've learned a lot and we're very excited to get moving forward on it. Uh, and then of course, trail expansions. This is a town of trails. We're proud of our trails. Uh, and the Mulock Farm will have many new trails on it uh, over in Ward 7 and, and, and Councilor Bazan's has been working on this uh, diligently. There's going to be a significant new trail in the, in the uh, 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 Northwest Quadrant uh, off of Wood Spring and off Environmental Park there. Just as a reminder to people, you don't have to go to the Tom Taylor Trail. There's other great locations in town. It can get bus busy there on the Tom Taylor Trail sometimes. Go explore this area. This is, uh, that's, uh, that's 160 acres of uh, old, old forest that was protected uh, by the town in partnership with the developers at that time. And it's got the trails now going through it. That trail's being built this summer. Great new addition. On the far left, that's the, that's the, uh, that's Mulock uh, uh, Road. Uh, and we identified council, uh, the members of council on this call identified a multi-use path on this, which will stretch through several wards uh, uh, through town. Um, and it's going to connect. If you think about this, this trail will take many years to build out, but it's already going out to, to get uh, designed and it will connect from one end of Mulock to the other through the town of Newmark. It will go from the industrial area so people working could use it. It'll come down, it'll go right up past Newmarket High School, the Magna Center, the new Mulock station that will eventually occur there, uh, the town offices, it'll cross, uh, it'll intersect with the Tom Taylor Trail, it'll intersect with the Mulock Park, it'll go to all, all the way uh, just very close to uh, Mulock High. So this trail will be a connector in so many ways. Uh, it's something we're, again, planning now for, maybe completed 10 years from now, but we'll start to get pieces of the puzzle in place and, and get those that kind of in, incredible infrastructure that people love. Uh, and we got to keep focusing on that through COVID. So really, you know, this is, a, this is a story about building an incredible community, about being committed to looking long-term, about working through a very difficult time with key partners and making sure that we emerge stronger, uh, that we continue to have a place where uh, people's investments, whether it's their homes or their businesses, uh, continue to thrive and a place where people are proud to go to a Magna Center, walk down a trail, visit a Mulock Park, uh, or go to a Riverwalk Commons and say, this is my home and I'm proud of it. And I'm happy to take any questions. Great. Thanks, Mayor Taylor. I, I will wait uh, to see if there's other questions coming up, but uh, you did touch on the trails and, and thank you. you. You jammed a lot into that presentation and I'm sure there's a lot more um, that we can talk about and, and that will come up. I just wanted to mention um, if you did not receive it yet, most of the people on the call are businesses and you should have received your copy of the um, Your New Market, which is, is here and there is a section. Oh, ha, ha, thanks for waving it, Councillor Broom. Um, there is a section on the trails. So we are trying to get people to understand that there's the Tom Taylor Trail is awesome, but there's lots of other gems that the town has, has invested in. And uh, so take a look at that. And, and much appreciated. Lots, of great places. <laughs> lots to explore. So, um, so watch for that. And uh, we'll be doing a feature on trail etiquette shortly as well, because that's, that's something that comes up <laughs> at the same yeah, time. It's, it's a, and, and the town is also embarking on a study to look at best practices and examples from other communities so that we can try to look at the trails, both from an infrastructure and an etiquette perspective um, and rules perspective to try to make them function a little better. But I can tell you uh, the, the interaction between users on trails are a challenge in every community, no matter how uh, much you encourage and how much you regulate, but we <laughs> hope we can make some, some meaningful improvements. 
Yeah. And I, and I know personally, it's been my sanity, um, the trail system in Newmarket during this, this pandemic, just being able to get out there and explore and, um, you know, so, so little that we could do. So opening up our minds and, and walking throughout has been, has been really important. <laughs> yeah. I, rec I recall early on in the pandemic, there was a moment where there's some, there's some efforts to close trails down. And I, 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 I drew, I drew a line. I said that this, we can't do that. Like people need, you know, mental health. It's relative. It, people need to get out and walk, you know, and, and it's been a, I think a lifesaver for many people. Yeah, I think so. And, and uh, kudos on the patio program. And I agree. I'm looking forward to uh, those reopening because uh, we can all support our local businesses that way. But I think we're, many of us are craving that interaction again. Yeah. Yeah. So um, well, welcome to when we can actually do that. I'm sure many people are dreaming yeah. about that moment. <laughs> um, Ryan Divich has put a question in, uh, given the current status of COVID and the rate of immunization, uh, what is your prediction for reopening in the coming weeks, months for Newmarket? And does Newmarket have a plan for reopening? Yeah, well, we, uh, we definitely have a plan. So uh, uh, in, internally, the, um, the town, of course, we have a, a lot of our own facilities and um, uh, our staff have uh, plans depending on what kinds of... And, and, and trust me, you know, who was it that said, I'm going to get this wrong, but it was uh, uh, the, uh, the, there was a famous boxer, somebody will tell me who it was, who said, uh, uh, you know, everybody's got a great plan until they get punched in the face. Uh, and so there's been, we've had many plans and, and you've got to adapt uh, those plans sometimes uh, when uh, the, the punch comes. But uh, we definitely have plans about how to reopen our facilities and, and, and different things. Uh, we've got to be guided by the province for everything else. Certainly our patio program is ready to go. Uh, and we are ready to support uh, in any way we can, any opportunity to come. Thank you, it was Mike Tyson. Uh, that's correct. So uh, it's, it's, it is, uh, it, it, we, we have our plan in place. I, I, I'll, I'll be happy to speculate uh, on what I think, but you know, it, I, I could easily be wrong. I will tell you this, that uh, Dr. Kurji, our Chief Medical Officer of Health, uh, only yesterday said to our uh, regional council, said that he believes it's not unrealistic to think that we could get the numbers down uh, to the point where it would be uh, reasonable to consider reopening of schools, he said, but I think he meant perhaps more than that by the May long weekend. I'll start by saying I think that's very, that's probably the most, Dr. Kurji is very ambitious uh, too when it comes to, to the, that area, but uh, it's, I think that's about as ambitious a plan as you could have, but I don't think it's out of the question. Um, I, you know, again, it's, it's, it's in our control. Uh, we need to, we need to, you know, just stay six feet apart from people and wear masks. Uh, and you know everything else will will uh, will follow. But I do think that we're going to see a, a very significant rollout of vaccinations in May and June. Uh, and I think you know the, the with the R value at 0.85 or lower, you're going to see the numbers just on that alone coming down, and then the vaccinations layering on top of that. So I remain incredibly optimistic. I think we're going to see significant uh, openings by the end of June. Uh, we could see it as early as end of May, early June. Um, but, but that's what I would, uh, I would like to hope for. Do you think as uh, one of the questions that came up um, is the question around first dose, second dose. So do you think the restrictions and, and distancing will be as strict even as we get that first dose um, into, into most arms? Like, are we going to see those type, same types of restrictions until we see more of um, all of us on the second dose? I think, I think most of the restrictions uh, around openings, closings, and what you can do can be achieved um, with first doses only, broad-based first doses, which looks like could be, you know, um, late June, uh, could be achievable maybe early July. Uh, I think the, the lifting of the masks in six feet will probably not occur until there's a second dose, um, a, a, a broad, a broad application of second doses is my understanding from the professionals I, I've heard from. Okay. Um, in terms of the economic development strategy that was recently um, uh, released, do you um, can you just expand a bit on how it will support job creation for businesses within our community? Yeah, and I, uh, I think so. I'll be very broad on it because I, yeah, but, <laughs> fifty thousand feet. Yeah, it's there. There's first of all one of the things that's in there, and we've always believed um, is a, a cornerstone of economic development, and it kind of comes from the for those who are really into this from the Richard Florida camp, but it's that um, that the you need to build an outstanding community. People will be attracted to have businesses. 
and people will be attracted to live. Uh, and many of those people who live there might even own businesses or, or have, you know, be directors or CEOs of companies. Uh, you have to build an incredible community uh, that where people want to grow businesses, live, they want, they want to relocate a business too. So I, I truly believe that um, some of the things we do like Riverwalk Commons, outdoor concerts, downtown Main Street, uh, the Mealock Park is, is actually uh, in part economic development um, and a significant part. Uh, it, but we also have um, some strategies in there about, um, um, for example, reaching out to key land owners, landholders, having uh, uh, strategic or targeted um, uh, meetings and conversations on an ongoing basis. Uh, there's a, a, it, a lot of it has to do with getting, um, getting those landholders, whether they're uh, industrial, commercial or uh, residential, and, 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 and nudging them towards um, bringing their projects uh, timelines up. And so we'll often meet with people. For example, the Upper Canada Malls recently released a um, uh, secondary plan, you could almost call it, but you know, long-term vision for development is, is really, will be a, an economic engine over the years. And that's something the town asked the mall to do. Now, you know, people can relax. They're, they're, this is a 30, 40 year vision for the mall. It's, they're not gonna pop up multiple uh, mid rises uh, in the next three, four years. Um, so, you know, the town will evolve slowly over time with that pro steady progression of one to 2% growth, 1000 people per year. But that we know that uh, part of economic development is, is, um, is, is uh, population growth driven. It's, you know, for, from that population growth. So that's part of it as well. And then meeting with some of the uh, key um, property owners, um, you know, I won't name anyone's, but aging, aging, uh, aging, uh, you know, plazas and stuff that are big footprints, um, big opportunity. And then of course, um, you know, a, a marketing strategy uh, around a targeted marketing strategy around uh, bringing in some of those key businesses, some, some targeting for growth and some targeting for, you know, bringing in landing big ones like Celestica. And finally, I would say is, is trying to do more work around branding ourselves and not just branding ourselves, but branding ourselves based on truth and reality. Uh, around our efforts and our continued efforts and accelerating our efforts to be an innovation center and an incubation center. And so trying to do more around innovation and incubation, and that could possibly even be, and we'll be exploring over the next number of years, the possibility of actually a physical uh, a space uh, in partnership with others. Um, so I think be between the innovation and incubation effort, uh, the, the growing, uh, building an incredible community and then targeted uh, interventions and marketing uh, uh, within with the business community and, and, and is, is, you know, those are some of a taste of some of the ingredients of the, the plan. Thank you. And we look forward to uh, partnering in that prosperity. Um, I think you may have already answered Krista Bradford's question a bit, but um, she writes the 2021, 2024 strategy for business attraction and job creation was interesting for me. Does council have a focus on attracting businesses specializing in skilled labor and are there companies in the pipeline already that will provide employment opportunities for our residents in the future? So um, I'll take the second one first. There are some companies and, and, and uh, Chris Callio and Liz Bryant are, are leads in economic development, who I know many of you know well and do such, uh, you know, such incredible work. They are working with uh, some companies right now that are, I think, going to be establishing themselves in the next while in the market in terms of the uh, employment opportunities. Uh, and um, that you know we'll, we'll continue to work at that, um, but the um, the the skilled labor um, there's a lot of work being done by that. Not necessarily specifically only by New Market, but there's a number of organizations and some new organizations to town. I met with one recently, a jobs uh, a job center, uh, working with uh, you know the labor council and, uh, and other organizations that are working at that skilled um, that skilled labor uh, piece. And there's there's a number of groups working together quite strategically on that. Um, and it is, it's, it's, it's a good point she's making that we have to keep our eye on that. Um, now, I know that the impact to many businesses over the last year has been severe. And I know that this is something we're dealing with our network provincially and, and um, nationally on as well. Um, but just a question, you know, once businesses reopen, they'll need time to stabilize some sectors more than others. Um, just wondering, will New Market continue their support programs for a time after the reopening to allow businesses that time to recover some of the programs that you talked about? Yeah, well, certainly they're, uh, they're in place for 2021. So uh, we have no intention of taking any programs on a month-by-month -month basis. So 
uh, they're, they're in place for 2021. It's hard to say beyond that. I'll just be honest with people. We're, we're a business and a corporation too, and we have a lot of financial stresses and strains COVID put on, uh, has put on us. Uh, and so, um, you know, we're, we, we kind of wait to see what the federal and provincial government's doing. They've been, they've been excellent at providing support to municipalities. And that's been enabling us to do some of the supports we're doing. So, I mean, I'll admit the heavy lifting is being done by the feds in the province in terms of the, all the businesses supports. And the ones we're able to do are largely as a result of, of some transfers from the feds in the province uh, to support us through COVID. Um, so, you know, we, right now we have, you know, our revenue has gone like other businesses close to zero uh, on, the, on the user fee side. Um, and so we're, I, I can't commit to anything beyond that, our, but our goal, we, but we do fully recognize that uh, you know, the minute that something reopens or there's some reopenings, that you know everybody's not out of the woods, and that there's uh, that we've got to be thinking about at, at all levels of government about supports, um, you know, for another year or two or perhaps even three, but hopefully not not that. And we're hoping to see a, a fast rebound, but um, certainly we're keeping an eye on that, and uh, we'd like to do as much as we possibly can. And, and I, if I can, Tracy, say this: I, I do think also it's. It's caused us to rethink uh, how we do a lot of things, right? And and there has been, as many people pointed out, some silver linings coming out of COVID. Um, uh, it's caused us to do business, you know, as a town and, and to operate and provide services in a different way. And so, you know, the the whole idea that we can partner uh, on 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 things that provide business opportunities that aren't that costly, like patio programs, not that they're inexpensive, but um, uh, and things like that. I think I, I I'd like us to to look at how some of those will become. Uh, part of the new normal uh, uh, over time. You know, yeah, being, more more, being more innovative with public space to support business, I think, is kind of a, an interesting area for the future. Yeah, and I think new markets focus on innovation, and, and that's not new. Um, it's certainly like Smart City Council and a number of things have been in place for some time to think about how doing things quicker, better, um, smarter, and, and I'm sure that that helped through the pandemic at, at the speed of which some of these programs were rolled out. And, and so we do recognize um, that and, and thank, thank you for that piece of it. Um, and I know like um, one of the questions that, that was coming up with us are these 15 minute cities, urban planning, um, that's really popular in Europe. Is that part of, of where the whole live, work, play motto and the economic development strategy is kind of coming into play? Is that feeding some of that? Yeah, well, so I, I think where to start on that one. So I, where I, what I think is actually New Market is very well positioned in a lot of ways. I mean, we're geographically tiny. So when they talk about 15 minute communities, um, and so for those listening, that's basically the, the concept that, you know, if you can live in any place and within 15 minutes, you can walk to get most of the things you need, school, shopping, groceries, uh, you know, amenities, uh, a drugstore, then, then that's a sustainable future community. My guess is if you, if you did, and they're starting to do this, if you do a 15 minutes uh, city analysis across the GTA, new market might come out on top. Um, we're a very compact community already connected by great trails. Everything's very close by. And so uh, when you start to talk about people wanting to live differently, um, live at home, walking becoming much more common, uh, uh, looking to walk uh, as a form of, you know, mental health exercise while I go to get my, uh, you know, uh, dinner tonight or whatever it is, we're well positioned for that. And so I, I think, you know, combining innovation with, with a, a, a town that is very comeback, very 15 minute oriented, uh, with great trails. And if we keep down, moving down that path, great public spaces, shared workspace opportunities, uh, and innovation, uh, we, we've got the we've got the, all of the right ingredients for uh, to attract a lot of people who want to live and work that way, and so I'm I'm very optimistic in that that way. And I think, um, you know, whether it's I'm a believer in whether it's business or the town or both, I believe you if you want to be stronger, you want to be better, you have to invest to get there. And, and I believe we'll continue to invest in some of those key partnerships and innovation uh, and public spaces uh, to make sure that. People are always looking at new market and saying, "What's going on over there? We, we, we got to take a look at that place." Um, and that's that's. It sounds like a funny way of explaining economic development, but that's one of the ways you 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 keep. I heard somebody that joined our team today, uh, uh, this week, uh, that came to the town of New Market to replace a retirement, and uh, the gentleman was from fairly far away. I worked in another municipality fairly far away, and he says, "You know, one of the things that attracted me was the the, the you know New Market's known for." For innovation and, and doing really interesting things. And he says, you know, I, and so 
you, you get that out there and, and, and let people understand that that's what you're about. And, it, and people will start to take notice. And I think it, it's, it's a, a, a working formula we have going for us right now. Yeah, and I, I think you nailed it earlier, like even from the collaboration standpoint, because we often hear like in the Ontario Chamber Network, and I know that you've had conversations with Rocco on, on these calls, um, but they often look to new market. Well, what's new market doing? You know, even during the pandemic, well, you know, we we hit the ground running together yeah, on, right, on the, right. the support and and that kind of set up um, many other other chambers and communities for that that same kind of support. So so it is out there, and, and certainly new markets received a number of innovation awards through the years in, in different areas, marketing, uh, economic development, and other areas. So, so I really do think there is a bit of a buzz there. I mean, it's it's a good and a bad when you're living in the glass house, but <laughs> I think we certainly want to be looked at as as um, you know one of one of the places to to look when you're when you're looking for ideas and the way to do things right. And I think at the basis of that innovation and the basis of new market success and the chamber success is uh, is partnerships, and so uh, all these key partnerships we have and and they're 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 so valuable and and really I, I the only way I can describe it is you know if you've ever worked in a workplace where there's a lot of egos or where there's no egos, uh, no egos have way more partnerships and and I think we've got a lot of uh, organizations in this community with low or no egos and that means everybody's willing to go I, I don't care where I stand in the mix here as long as we do something great. And so when you think about the chamber and the town and the BIA and, and South Lake Regional Health Center, who is so important right now in what we're doing, and the region of York, which people forget is such an important partner to us and a lot of our successes, and the province, the federal government, working with our counterparts uh, that we're doing way more now during COVID, keeping that going. And then other, other partners that people don't think of, right? Like not-for-profit housing or the faith community. The faith community does so much in this town in terms of housing or in terms of supporting the, the, the food bank or uh, supporting uh, localized communities. Uh, there's all these key partners and making sure that, that, that we're all communicating and talking all the time about what we want to do next and who can contribute and how uh, will always be stronger. And, and if, if we can all check our egos at the door, which I think is, is pretty much the norm here, uh, great things will happen. Yeah, and I think that's a, a good point to your point earlier about the silver linings in the pandemic. I think that more than ever, um, the different organizations are realizing that, you know, we're stronger together, that, you know, we can do more with our resources, our time and our efforts if we work together. And, and so it's, it's broken down um, yeah. some even, even additional walls to realize that, you know, the faith community, the business community, the uh, environment and, and conservation, they yeah. all coexist. And, and to your point about you have to have great parks to attract the right workers and you have to have the right businesses wanting to come here and, and it's a huge ecosystem and it, and you know certainly the town staff um understand that and in some of the strategies we're seeing out keep that first and foremost and, and that's coming out in in some of those plans that you presented today it really is uh you know you said it it's it's you know and and, and the council has these discussions all the time it, it, it's it's an ecosystem and finding the balance right uh be, because you, you know you need housing options for people to have successful businesses even, and for, you know, for seniors and for people who are, need some support. Uh, and, and that's part of a successful community, but you need a strong local economy as well. You need incredible public spaces, but you need a competitive tax rate, whether it's commercial or business taxes or, or residential taxes. Uh, and so you're, you're constantly trying to balance and move forward, balance and move forward, balance and move forward. Because if, if any part of that ecosystem becomes out of balance, uh, then, then the whole thing becomes at jeopardy. So it really is finding a, a winning formula and trying to hold that formula and move forward. Uh, and yeah. uh, and I, another thing I want to say about you know key partnerships, and I'm, and I'm giving a plug here, uh, and I mentioned it earlier, but uh, you know, and this is something many people on the call wouldn't be exposed to, but uh, I won't name names, but there are many other communities in Ontario where the councils uh, uh, don't work together, even the councillors and the mayors, and the and there's infighting and uh, you know, our council, if, if, if for those of you, I, I, if you have ever watched a meeting, are so professional, so thoughtful, so well-informed, no egos, you know, thinking of the whole town, not just fighting for their ward while making sure they take care of their ward. It's, uh, we're, we're benefiting from a very professional, strong, uh, focused council as well. And we have for, for a number of years, and it, and it, makes, a, it makes a difference. 
Um, and then they, they individually can go out and partner with all the other groups uh, in, their, in their wards and across town and then the chamber uh, and others to, to do great things. But it's, it's really, you know, you don't wanna become complacent, uh, but you want to be uh, very professional and very focused on outcomes um, when you're working as a council or when you're working with other groups in, in a community. And I just think, you know, that's, that's the magic sauce in Newmarket. Uh, we've, we've got so many great people working so hard, uh, so professionally in cooperation, uh, and, but with great ambition. Uh, and that's the other part, you know, you, know you, you always need to be reaching for the stars. Um, otherwise you're just uh, treading water. And so I, I'm, I'm very, very excited for, for our future. I'm, I'm, I'm very excited to get COVID behind us like many people, um, and, but when we do, there'll be, there'll be, uh, there'll be, it will be uneven. Uh, and I've made this argument and it might be a, one that some people in the call don't like. I've made the argument at the council and at regional council, but there are many, many people who have not suffered uh, financially through COVID. In fact, probably a majority. Uh, and so our, our supports and our interventions at all levels of government going forward need to target those most in need, the, the small business community, uh, those were, who work in certain industries, uh, you know, the restaurant industry, et cetera. Um, and uh, we've got to make sure we're, we're, we're targeting the support so that it gets where it needs to go. Uh, and those who haven't suffered have already been doing an amazing job about supporting the business community. And they're, they're going to be needed as much as the town and new market in the coming year. We're, we're all going to need to get out there and support those businesses as they emerge from this and try to find creative ways and, and use our own resources to, to make purchases and empty our bank accounts a little bit uh, uh, to, to make this uh, recovery fulsome. And it's gonna be challenging, but I, I, I'm, I as you, people probably have figured out, I'm an eternal optimist. I think uh, we're gonna rebound from this quickly. Uh, it'll be an, an uneven rebound and we're gonna have to watch for that. We're gonna we'll have to make sure nobody falls through the cracks, uh, but it's going to be very exciting. And when we come out of it, I think uh, we're gonna be ready, uh, as I said before, with all our plans and all our partnerships to continue to move new market forward. And I think we will continue to stand out across Ontario. Great. Jennifer Walker also mentions the charities and the not-for-profits that will have to be there to support them as, we, as we're coming out of, out of this as well, um, who haven't Great. been able to fundraise. We are at 1258, Mayor Taylor. So I just, uh, if you have any other closing remarks um, that you wanted to, to bring forward. Um, you know, my, my closing remark is always a request for people to keep doing what they're doing. Uh, and that's in two fronts. And, and the one I won't go on too long about, but is stay safe and follow the guidelines. Um, whether it's to keep your friends, neighbors and family safe, or whether it's to get these numbers down so we can get out of lockdown and open our businesses. Uh, it, 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 we're all in this together and we really are. I know some people say oh, we're not in this together. We are in this together. Uh, and some people are bearing more of it than others, but we're only going to get through it and get out of it and recover strong together. Uh, so um, let's, let's do what we have to do to get the, this uh, the, through this vaccination period. Um, but the other part is, you know, I, I, my, my, inbo my inbox tells me the, the mood and the tone of the town. And I remember early on when we put a lot of those measures in place like the, the community positivity ambassadors, you could feel the, 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 the tension or the, 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 the people were down uh, and I'm feeling it again right now. And you know, I, right now uh, people need to reach out to their friends and their family and their neighbors uh, and try to support them, cheer them up, give them some reason to be optimistic, just touch base, human communication you know, uh, a few people have probably seen stuff on Facebook or experienced there's a tulip fairy going around and dropping tulips uh, with people. That's what we need right now. I know it sounds, oh, Mayor, really? You think the answer to our problems are tulips? Actually, in a way, I do. Uh, you know, the, the vaccines are rolling out. Uh, we're going to reopen, I hope soon. But right now, uh, for the next 30, 40, 50 days, what we need are tulips. Uh, and so to everybody, spread some goodwill. Watch out for your friends and loved ones, cheer them up, watch out for yourself uh, and make sure you're, you're doing okay. Get outside, get fresh air and get exercise. Uh, and it's hard, I'm, I'm finding it hard, um, but we're, we're getting there. And I definitely see the, the, the trend line is where it needs to go now. The numbers are coming down, the vaccines are going up, the sunshine is around the corner uh, and a new market, we've got a very bright future. Uh, just take care of each other and we're gonna have a very, very strong finish to 2021. Thank you. 
Thanks for that. And as somebody who actually had a visit from the Tulip Ferry, and I recently moved in Newmarket during this pandemic, like two weeks ago, um, I was feeling a little down and defeated. And so to come in to have tulips waiting for me at the doorway, it did make a huge difference. It's small, but it's big. So like little things like that can make a huge difference. Um, and thank you, Mayor Taylor, for your time and your insights today and for everything that the town is doing. Um, I do hope that we'll be able to meet in person as we used to over a lunch uh, in the fall, maybe even. Let's hope that we can get together at that time. Um, I know that Kyle and I know that you, Mayor Taylor, have already acknowledged it, but I do want to thank the town, uh, the town staff, council, you, um, for your partnership and collaboration on so many different projects with us. We can do so much more together, um, and collaboration is what makes Newmarket beyond the ordinary, truly, and we've we've illustrated that today in such a great place to live and work. So thank you um, for that spirit of collaboration. And I do want to thank Minkin Employment Lawyers. I have to because um, they make it possible for us to bring these things to our, our membership. They're our advocacy partners. So I do want to um, take a moment to thank them and, and all of our partners for enabling our work here as well. And uh, thank you everyone for joining us and I wish you all a great weekend.